Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the East Riding of Yorkshire series. Together with the unparished city of Hull, it forms the county of the same name. There's 172 parishes here. Which one are we in today? Welcome back to the East Riding of Yorkshire, everybody. Now, today we're beginning at a street called Norris Avenue. And as you can see from this plaque underneath the road sign, Norris Avenue is in memory of Sergeant B. Norris, bomb aimer, Royal Air Force, stationed at Pocklington Airfield, killed in action on the 12th of December, 1942, aged 19 years. Now, Pocklington Airfield, we'll be seeing that in this episode because it forms part of the parish of Barnby Moor. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Barnby Moor lies to the north of the A1079 road, situated approximately 12 and a half miles away from the city of York, and one and a half miles west of the market town of Pocklington. It used to be a market town itself. The market was a weekly affair, but it's long been obsolete. Until recent times, it retained one market day annually on the Thursday preceding St. Peter's Day. The village was probably a Scandinavian settlement. Originating as Barnby, its name means Barnes Farm, and it was not until the late 13th century that Barnby was used as an alternative spelling. It's one of two Barnbys in the East Riding. The other one, Barnby on the Marsh, close to Gaul, was covered a long time ago. Historically, this village was called Barnby on the Moor. Presumably, on the Moor and on the Marsh were added to their names to distinguish the two. Mind you, they're wildly different settlements anyway. Each July, a traditional fete, the Barnby Feast, is held in the village on the Thursday following July the 10th. It once had a coaching inn, and it still boasts a lovely pub called the Boot and Slipper. Flanked by the A1079, the road which links York to Market Wheaton, Barnby Moor also has the B1246 road, which passes through the village on the way to Pocklington. We're going to pass through too, but not before we've had a good look around. We begin on Hull Road, and no, that's not misspelt in the caption below. That's genuinely how it appears on maps and local addresses. Where we are here is to the far west of the parish boundaries, right on the border with Wilberfoss. I've included this area because off Hull Road, there's a few interesting bits like Caravan Park, which goes by the name of Florida Keys. Also up here, there's a Thai restaurant, bar and hotel called Thai Season. I'm led to believe it's quite popular. In the intro, I made reference to a former coaching inn. It was up here too. Although I couldn't pin down a building date, it was known in 1840 as the New Inn. It was then renamed as the Squirrels in 1974. These days, it's a hotel known as the Old Coach House and Coach House Cottages. It's not the only former pub which stood outside of Barnby Moor Village. A pub named the George was referred to in 17th century records, and an inn stood on the main road south of the village in 1770, known as the Bunch of Grapes, and later as the Wilmer Arms. On the way down the A1079 we pass a petrol station, and a few other oddments which lie outside the main village. The A1079, the former York to Beverley Turnpike in the 1700s, follows the course of a Roman road, which once linked York to Market Wheaton. 
urns and vestiges of Roman pottery have been found, and in 1763, four human skeletons were discovered in a gravel pit, one of which was enclosed in a stone coffin with an urn by its head. This first section of the village is very residential. After walking from Norris Avenue, where I recorded this video's intro, we're on a housing estate off Back Lane. This street is Hodso Fields, whose name is a reference to a huge grassland close which covered a vast area to the east of Barnby Moor. Hodso Close is referred to in records from 1649. It would appear this estate dates from 1987. That's the year given on a date stone in the middle of these two properties here. A large part of Barnby Moor Village has been designated as a conservation area and it's not hard to see why. Flowing through the place is a gorgeous little beck, which crosses a wonderfully kept green later. We'll see this a couple of times as we walk around. Back Lane runs all the way down to the A1079 and here we're at the end of it. The A1079 at this point marks the boundary with Allathorpe. There's an industrial estate over the road which belongs to Allathorpe despite being closer to Barnby Moor. So I kind of get to thinking I'm probably walking this route the wrong way around because I'm pretty sure when I planned this that section you've just seen was supposed to be the last bit because it's all residential. But I suppose um, doing it this way around it's got that out of the way and now we're heading towards the area that's got all the important and interesting stuff I suppose. Let's talk about buses next. Along the A1079 you can catch the number 195 and the X36 services. The X36 links Barnby Moor with Hull to the south and York to the north. The number 45, 46 and X47 can be caught on Main Street. And now we emerge onto the green and what a lovely part of the village this is by the way. The beck runs right through the middle of it and you can cross the water using three quaint little bridges which link the green to Beckside. In addition to the green there are wide grass verges beside other streets in the village. The green used to be bigger, but thanks to developments, some of it has been lost. In terms of housing though, still even now, most of the village is only loosely built up. Its older houses date from the 18th and 19th centuries, and some of them have been recently renovated, with Barnby's increasing popularity as a residential village definitely evident. Given how nice this looks, I wouldn't mind living here myself. I must say, when a village has a beck like this one, it doesn't half make it look pretty. Official petition, every village should have a beck. <laughs> village idiot 2022. We've come around the corner onto Beckside now, opposite Brookside Close. Not a lot to say really about this area, it's just a street that connects the green to Main Street. Brookside Close is a good bit of evidence of some infilling that's gone on in the village. Out onto Main Street next and we come to a bus shelter. I found two of these on Main Street. In this one, there's a parish notice board so you can mark Barnby Moor off your list now, folks. 96 to go in the East Riding. This building, set back from the road, is Barnby Moor Post Office. This is open Monday to Saturday with half day closing on a Wednesday. This is so good to see because we've seen villages larger than this which don't even have one. Moving on, here we have a small playground off Main Street, which goes by the name of the Little Play Park. This is a valued facility in the village and it's kept well maintained. This is also legally protected by Fields in Trust. So there's another one of these uh, information boards in a bus shelter, a bit further up near the park. Uh, the other one had a, like a, a little library in it, a little uh, free library, book exchange didn't really have a look at it because it wasn't all that big so I thought no I'll probably leave it this time um, but yeah in this one there's some leaflets in this box here I assume this is for people advertising things this one's to do with the Bootit Club learn how to use your tablet or internet phone every Thursday morning during turn time you can join our club and become more confident in using tablets or internet phones <laughs> sounds interesting pretty sure a few people would uh, benefit from that. Right, let's carry on walking. The church, which is dedicated to St. Catherine, is a spacious building of stone, rebuilt in 1851 and 52. Built in perpendicular style, it comprises a chancel, a nave, a porch and a pinnacle tower, surmounted by a graceful octagonal spire. The church was rebuilt after the Norman Conquest too, and about 300 years later it was restored, adding the tower and the spire at that point both tower and spire were retained in the 1851 rebuild. 
The modern church will seat about 300 people. There was a church here in Saxon times, which was probably erected by one of the early Danish owners of the village. An ancient font, which now stands in the vicarage's garden, is said to belong to that period. Inside the porch was a photo of the late Queen Elizabeth II standing next to a floral tribute. One assumes there was a book of condolence with this too, although it had seemingly been removed at this point. While well, this was a little bit unexpected, centuries old building on the outside, but on the inside, look at this. This is very new, very modern. Let's have a, a look inside, shall we? See what it looks like. Oh, wow. So what have we got on the wall here? There's a tablet. This is Herbert Theodore Cliff. Major in the 3rd Prince of Wales' own West Yorkshire Regiment, who was killed in action near Hasbronk in the north of France, aged 39. I don't know whether I pronounced that right or not. Okay. Look at this organ. <clears throat> nice bit of stained glass. There's some murals on the wall here. One that side, and there's one that side too. Some coats of arms up above. And look at this awesome floor. There's a something on this tile. Uh, Herbert Minton, of whose generosity this pavement here testimony, he was buried at Hartsill in the county of Stafford, April 8th, 1858. The churchyard is well worth a visit in and of itself. Just outside the church door, you'll find this worn rectangular stone. My research tells me this is thought to be a medieval gravestone, but I can't give with any certainty a date for this. Also in the churchyard is a dedicated area set aside for Commonwealth war graves. There are 54 servicemen from World War II and one from World War I in here, and they're overlooked by a huge cross, the village's war memorial. Alongside the churchyard is Hall Spout, and the only property on the road is Barnby Manor, sometimes referred to as the Hall, perhaps wrongly. Grade 2 listed, the manor house was once owned by the Duncombe family, a name synonymous with Barnby Moor. Barnby Moor Village Hall next on Chapel Street. This is a timber-framed ex-army mess hall given to the village in 1930. The hall has seating for 100 people and has a number of large tables. There's a small enclosed garden to the rear with car parking. So I guess you could kind of term this the village centre. We've just seen the village hall. There's a Methodist church not too far away from it. That's this building here. There we go. It says morning service 11am on the board just there. Methodist church. Whether or not it's still in use, I don't know. It doesn't look very used, does it? Maybe. We'll see. I'll see if I can find some information out about it. There's also a phone box over there, which has got something in it. I'll check that out in a moment. And beyond that, you can see the pub, the boot and slipper. So let's check out all these things now. The first Wesleyan Methodist Chapel in the village dated from 1807, and then it was rebuilt on this enlarged site in 1869. According to the Parish Council's website, this chapel is still in use. Barnby also had a Quaker meeting house in the 1700s, by the way. The phone box is known to the locals as the Red Box Library. This was purchased by the Parish Council, whose website encourages you to use this facility by adding or borrowing books. It also says to keep it tidy. The Boot and Slipper has existed since the early 1800s. Originally, it was called the Boot and Shoe. Together with the Village Hall, this is the heart of the community and central to most festivities at Barnby Feast Time. Moving back up Main Street, here we have Barnby's Old National School. This was built in 1845 on a site given by the Duncombs. By 1850, its average attendance was 44. Speaking of schools, we're still yet to see a modern one here yet. So what that little section has done, <clears throat> it's uh, taken us around the hall and around the church to the other side. There you go, there's Hall Spout from the other way. And uh, to finish off, we just need to walk down here. And down here, there's only really one landmark, and that's the current primary school. The road we're on now is Flat Lane, in the middle of which is this nice little open green space. If you continue further up the road, you'll hit a bigger one, the village's playing fields. Barnby Moor has both a football club and a cricket club who play there. 
Here then is Barnby Moor Church of England Primary School, which caters for children from ages 3 to 11. This school replaced the old National School in 1974, although there was a short period when both buildings were used concurrently. St Helens Square will take us back towards the pub. I thought this was quite unusual. Many times we've seen narrow lanes which have passing places, but it's rare to find one of these in a more built-up area. Finally, check out this stall outside a house just up from the boot and slipper. Isn't this just fantastic? I would have purchased something here, but I had no money on me because like a true village idiot, I left my wallet at home. And that's brought us to a little bench, which is directly opposite the boot and slipper, which is where I'm going to have a perch just for five minutes after the walk and introduce for you today's picture bit.
So as well as the tribute we saw in the church for the Queen, here at the Boot and Slipper, there's a half-mast flag and plenty of floral tributes to go with it. Here we go, look, let's have a read at some of these messages. I'm sure they're gonna be nice, let's have a look. Okay, uh, HM the Queen, whose passing has affected us all so deeply, there will never be another like you from a loyal subject. The Queen will be greatly missed, RIP, that's John and Vivid, mm, can't tell what that says. <laughs> Couldn't read that name, sorry. Uh, let's see if there's any other ones. There's one inside here. Ooh. Let's have a look. This always feels a little bit nosy doing this, but there are quite nice messages. Thank you, Your Majesty Queen Elizabeth, for being such an amazing head of state and role model. You remained humble, steadfast, and true right to the end as you promised, RIP. Ah, oh. there we go. Okay, I'll not read any others. Those three will do. And uh, there's a note here about the Book of Condolence in the church, which we saw earlier. So, uh, yeah, good work, residents of uh, Barnby Moor, for the Queen. Excellent. Okay, um, all I've got left to do now is walk down this road, past this bus stop, uh, and uh, Kell Spring Lane, which is where I parked next to uh, Norris Avenue, will appear on the left very shortly. And then, once I've got back to the car, we'll be heading out towards the airfield, Pocklington Airfield, to finish off today's episode. To finish off then, we're taking a drive onto the Pocklington Industrial Estate, which sits on part of the former RAF Pocklington Air Base. The street we're on here is called Halifax Way, named for one of the types of aircraft that were flown from here. RAF Pocklington was an operational flying station during World War II, forming part of Bomber Command, operating primarily Wellington and Halifax bombers. The station opened in 1941 and it was closed in 1946. After a return to agricultural use, the station is now used primarily as this industrial estate, but part of the airfield still sees some aviation because much like Curtin in Lindsay and Sherburn in Elmit, there's a gliding club here. As industrial estates go, this one is really busy, and at the moment it's relatively small. However, it's getting bigger. In 2015, work was completed on the first phase of a three-phase extension, known collectively as Broadhelm Business Park. Broadhelm has already been very successful. The second phase has recently been completed, and it's hoped the third will create many more jobs for the Pocklington area. That's the opinion of Jonathan Atkinson, the director of Broadvale Developments, the company behind the construction. It's already included the construction of two new trade units for Howdens and HomeFit UK, as well as a brand new roundabout, which links the industrial estate to the A1079. At the southernmost tip of the former airbase, you'll find that roundabout. There's some services here, including a KFC, a Starbucks, and a second petrol station within the parish boundaries. Now, let's go and find that gliding club. So from here, you can see some of the old runways. It's not greatly clear, but I will walk up there in a moment because you can see a little bit better from over there. There's the windsock, and in the background, you've got um, Wald's Gliding Club, okay? And uh, that's the only part of the airfield that's still used these days for anything that's kind of um, aviation related. So we'll walk up here, we'll get a few more shots of the uh, old runways and uh, finish this episode off. So from up here you can see much more clearly the old runways. The first occupants of the site in 1941 were the Canadian Air Force's 405 Squadron who operated Wellington bombers, completing 84 raids in the space of 11 months. In April 1942, the squadron changed to Halifax bombers flying a further 20 raids before exchanging bases with the RAF's 102 Squadron from RAF Topcliffe. 102 Squadron were the last operational unit to occupy the base. A large number of the original buildings still stand. The station had five hangars in total, three originally and two built later. Following the airfield's closure, the hangars were used as grain stores. The technical area became the industrial estate. The original runways are still in use by the Wolds Gliding Club, who secured the lease to the airfield in 1971 and purchased it outright from the landowner in 1983. Former members of 102 Squadron still hold reunion events here at the Gliding Club. So it feels like I've come full circle. Started with uh, a shot of 
um, Norris Avenue, which is obviously to do with uh, a member of the RAF who would have been um, associated with this place. And then, of course, we finish at this place. <laughs> so it does feel like we've come all the way around Barnby Moor in a great big circle, doesn't it? And that is Barnby Moor, my friends. Nothing more to tell you about this place. Time for me to move on to my next one here in the East Riding of Yorkshire. Do hope you've enjoyed this one. I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot. This has been the Parish of Barnby Moor. I'm out.